Hello? Oh, f that's loud. Into the Radius and Ghosts of Tabor. In one reality, you explore a post-apocalyptic wasteland filled with terrifying monsters. All right, we got a spawn incoming. Watch. Oh! Got his ass midair. Into the Radius is essentially hell. And in the other, you are a military operative whose objective is to scavenge complete scenarios and survive against other players in a post-apocalyptic war-torn reality. I'm gonna hit up the lighthouse. There's a couple NPCs up here that I'm pretty certain I can f up. Nice guns we got here, boys. Ghost of Tabor's game art lends itself very well to the whole European-Russian war vibe that the developers were going for. There are three different maps, which all look extremely good and are a ton of fun to play on. Let's be honest, the only map that exists in Ghost of Tabor is the island now. <laughs> Damn, bro! There's so many guns in here. Into the Radius, on the other hand, has a completely different kind of vibe, similar in the fact that they are both post-apocalyptic worlds, but that's right about where the similarities end because Into the Radius has a distinctly sci-fi theme where you will uncover clues and interact with supernatural entities and anomalies across five beautiful maps. I could go over to this thing and climb to the absolute top of it and then yeet myself off the edge. I can do that in this game, all right? And just to prove it to you, I haven't climbed to the top of this thing in a minute. If you really want to grow a set of brass balls, walk on this and look down. This will put some hair on your chest, I guarantee it. In Ghost of Tabor, you spend most of your time raiding the different maps, collecting loot and resources, completing missions, upgrading your gear, and you can do all of this with your friends. Ghost of Tabor is playable with up to three members per party, but if you'd rather go at it solo, you can do that too. It is so beautiful sometimes to just walk next to the ocean in this game. Oh shit. Oh! Oh come on! This game is kicking my ass right now. <laughs> Into the Radius is more of an open world single player survival game where you can explore and discover different locations. Every area of the map is super rich in lore, loot, and supernatural enemies. Your goal is to scavenge for loot to survive, upgrade your gear, collect borderline hyper-realistic weapons, defend yourself against the dangers of the radius, build up your base, and uncover the mysteries of the Pachorsk event. Other than getting the absolute shit scared out of you, what is there that you can do in Into the Radius? There's so much you can do in this game. I honestly would not be surprised if if you spent like a thousand hours in this game somehow. It's just a great place to hang out in. You can even eat pineapples in here. Yeah, that's the thing. Ghost of Tabor has pretty good graphics. Aside from view distance feeling kind of low at times and distant objects appearing noisy and blurry, everything up close and medium range looks pretty awesome. The maps all have their own unique style. Guns and gear all have very highly detailed 3D meshes. And in general, the game runs really smoothly. Something that these games do have in common is that they look beautiful, they do. Into the Radius has some of the best looking graphics you can find on standalone or PC VR. When it comes to PC VR, you can get Into the Radius to look scary realistic, but that's only if you have a powerful PC. When you start to test the upper limits of this game's graphics, and I'm speaking from experience here, you will definitely run into some stuttering and even crashing. But in general, on standalone and medium PC VR graphic settings, Into the Radius is one of the best looking VR games that is out there. I'm not saying this because I'm an Into the Radius lover. I'm a lover of Into the Radius and Ghost of Tabor, dude. Both these games are dope, but I'd be lying to you guys if I said that Ghost of Tabor's weapons look better than Into the Radius's. These look so good. They look so realistic. It makes you feel so much more grounded in this world, dude. All of them look insane. Both of these games have extremely satisfying combat systems. The progression systems are super fun and the gameplay loops are addictive. <laughs> but one thing that still kind of pisses me off about Ghost of Tabor is the fact that I still have weapons that disappear into thin air. That is a nice little haul, if I do say so myself. Excuse me. Where did that shit go? Here, just give me a second. This is actually bananas. You gotta be f***ing 
f***ing kidding me. Where is it, dude? I think my gun just got sent off into oblivion somewhere because I ran into this door. <laughs> Ghosts of Tabor is about 20 bucks, and the developers are continually updating the game, adding new DLC content like special cosmetics and exclusive weapons. Oh my god! What the hell, bro? Dude, that's nice. I had no clue that we got this. Into the Radius is a little more expensive at 30 bucks. This game was in development for a super long time and has officially been finished, so unfortunately there are no no more updates coming to Into the Radius. Thankfully though, we've been getting updates for the past two years. So now the game has an insane amount of content in it and replayability. So you won't be getting bored anytime soon. Possibly the most satisfying thing that you could do in this game is clean your weapons. All right, now take a look at this. See, I bet you've been looking at this game because you're like, oh, that looks like a really cool atmosphere and that looks super spooky. But little did you know that you were also getting a gun cleaning simulator. <laughs> Something these games do have in common though is that you get some badass home bases, dude. First up, let's take a look at the crib that you get in Ghost of Tabor. Your base in this game is absolutely decked out. We got storage on top of storage, boys. Armories on top of armories. Got your trade room. Look at this. Oh, maybe I want to look at my Uwu AKM because that's a thing in this game. There's actually a market in this game. So basically you come here, not literally, and aside from the beautiful classical piano, music you can also experience some tasty beverages or perhaps a bandage to wrap those wounds that you just got there's a generator room because believe it or not the lights aren't always on in here all right this is a level of immersion the likes of which we've never seen before you actually have to use gas in the game we even have a shooting range in here huh look at how nice this is boys you want to come in here and test your skills out a little bit send a few down there send a few down the range then you can totally do that there's even an actual money vault that you can come in and just look at your money, dude. And if you didn't know this by now, Ghost of Tabor was the VR game of the year at the seventh international VR awards and quite frankly, the most important room in this entire base, the shitter. <laughs> This is where we come in and take absolutely massive Ghost of Tabor's bunker is pretty awesome with a ton of stuff to do. But now, take a look at the home base you get in Into the Radius. You got a nice little room where you can store some stuff. You can come over here to the shop and buy anything that you want. Alright, you can play a goddamn guitar. Into the Radius. Into the radius come on all my friends let's explore till the end into the radius don't pet that spawn make sure to bring a gun into the radius <clears throat> Dude, so what can't you do in Into the Radius? You can literally play guitar, literally create a fallout shelter, sit down over here and smoke a cigarette. There's even a dartboard. You can play some darts. We got every piece of combat equipment you could possibly want. At the end of the day, who wins this battle? Ghost of Tabor or Into the Radius? And I know you're gonna hate me for this, but I would call this match a tie. Both games are top tier. Into the Radius is a top tier story-driven single-player survival game, and Ghost of Tabor is a top tier multiplayer pvp tarkov light game however into the radius would suit someone who enjoys sci-fi stuff and a virtual world that you can seriously get immersed and lost in welcome to one of the most absolutely f***ing decked out shooting ranges in vr we got speed tests <laughs> another shooting range and if there's any guns that you don't have that you want to try out there's a shop that literally has everything in the game we also have the kill house and yes there is another shop over here if you want to see how formidable you are with a specific gun you probably thought that it was over and there's there's nothing else there's a little sniper station up here boys look at that dude perfectly placed Seriously insane. Look at the amount of detail that is on the stock of this gun. Oh. I think that Ghost of Tabor is better for someone who enjoys a multiplayer military combat game where the main focus is to raid, collect loot, upgrade your base, and socialize with other players. The one thing that Ghost of Tabor really does have over into the radius is that, look at this, if you do in fact have friends, you could, you could play with them online if you wanted to. This is a multiplayer game. You can have a squad of up to three different 
people. But if I'm being honest, if you love VR, I think both of these games are worth checking out. They are truly two of the best VR games out there when it comes to content, price point, graphics, and replayability. So if you want to check these games out, there are links to them in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. It would literally make my day if you did. And uh, hey, I mean, if you liked this video, I'm pretty sure that you're going to like these ones too.